Welcome to the Assassin's Creed Uni Review. I'm here with Dan, Josh, and Luke, and we're going to take a look at the technical aspects of the game and give you our impressions. So Josh, do you want to kick it off with the environment modeling? Yeah, sure. Uh, so starting out here, you can see like Ubisoft has gone to great lengths to create uh, a very dense and massive world, as we can see here. And uh, something that I really think that's great about this is the buildings themselves. I mean, obviously, nobody knows exactly what 18th century Paris looks like, but we know what the landmarks look like. And so Ubisoft has this tool and system to create all of these different buildings. Um, and so it's kind of like building splines in something like 3ds Max or Maya. So they can just drag out like a length of buildings, and it'll populate all of that randomly. And then the designers can go in and make little tweaks and changes on how they want to do that. So that's how they were able to create this uh, very, very quickly. Um, also, it gives them the ability to change things like rooftops um, to help out with gameplay and maneuverability. Uh, so they built a really robust system for a very uh, lofty goal um, in this game, and it's really great. So if we want to go down into like the city area, I want to take a look at uh, some more of the environment. We'll start looking at like things like props and uh, the buildings, and just kind of taking a look at some of the silhouettes of that. Um, so, like, looking at uh, the buildings, first and foremost, like in last-gen games, uh, something that really irked me were corners on buildings. Um, having buildings where they were just flat and very sharp corners uh, was something that just kind of broke the immersion. But as you can see, like, on corners of buildings, they've actually modeled in <clears throat> some of the variation that you see on that, and really softened those edges. Uh, things like the brick that you see there across the top there, just kind of breaking up that line about midway. Uh, from the character is a really great way of just kind of breaking apart the flat textures and the flat modeling um, of the buildings themselves. Um, other things uh, that they've added to buildings are things like that little ornate cylindrical piece to that. Um, you know, adding that to a corner of a building can really break it up. And then adding on little small details like the, uh, the scaffolding that you see around the edge there and then the market um, being built on that as well. And so really filling all of that in can really break up the silhouette of uh, a city street, which is a really great way of, of set dressing. Um, some other things that, that are really great about the environments inside of Assassin's Creed Unity are um, the, uh, the props that you see, like the overturned carts, the piles of just junk that we see here, uh, really well done. Um, just, you just kind of get an idea. I mean, I've seen images of what uh, interpretations of like the French Revolution and, and, and things like this were things that I imagined it would be like. So they did a really great job with that. Um, any other things that you guys thought about props and uh, environments uh, as far as modeling goes? I was really impressed with, and you noticed like along the, the sidewalk here, um, they even went to adding in some variation in the sidewalk. So it's not a straight line yeah. to the over thing. You can see a little bit of a bend here, a little bit of a curve. Um, really impressed me that they went to that level of detail um, to really bring home the environment. Yeah. Something else that you'll notice, like <clears throat> the streets are not perfectly flat, which is really mm -hmm. cool. It's got like kind of this dip in the middle there which really kind of sucks you in. And I think those are things that we just take advantage of that we really don't even notice in games and you know, they really pulled it off with something like that. Yeah, I think it's really impressive just the sheer amount of props they were able to get into the environment. Just walking around, you can see so many different small props that you can interact with and really see all the great detail that they put into it. Yeah, I mean, it's something else to like take note of on the props like with cylindrical shapes, um, they're perfectly smooth. Um, mm -hmm. There were very few areas on cylindrical shape props that were faceted. I mean, look at that, that bucket there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, I would expect that to be like eight sides in a normal video game, but like polygon count on that, that's probably like 24 sides. And that's, that's almost unheard of, which is really, really cool. Something else that I know is it's kind of along, along those lines. Um, not in this particular shot, but as I was playing it, there was some of the characters that were interacting with the actual props mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking of there was one merchant who was 
banging on a, a wheel for a cart and you pick it up and look at it and I think because they had that detail in there and it was you know a cylindrical shape and it was perfectly smooth they were able to kind of draw attention to that through other aspects as well um, because they didn't have the very faceted sides yeah um, a couple of things like with the buildings as well um, there's a lot of randomness so with that tool that I was talking about where they build out the the buildings um, that creates a randomness uh, that you see like with on the rooftops. There's like these window facades. Those are all extra pieces of geometry that are just basically laid into that roof, um, which is a really cool uh, feature that it has in that. Um, some problems that that can create technically on the gameplay side is that all of these windows you can climb up on. And so the more details you have on a building, that can create more issues with gameplay. So trying to maneuver around, um, the game controller may, or the, the game system may think that you're trying to climb up this certain area, but you really wanted to go to a different window. Um, and so by adding more, you can actually kind of um, convolute the whole process of trying to move around. But I, all in all, I still think it did a really great job. I mean, who would think to actually add a scaffold like this? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's incredible detail. And all of these chimneys and things like that, I mean, adding all of those, what it really does is it breaks up the skyline. And they did that with all of the buildings in this. And that's something that just really, really impressed me. Now, not, not just looking at it from just the building itself, but from the entire uh, silhouette of the skyline across Paris. I was really impressed with a lot of the, uh, a lot of the lighting in, in those mm -hmm. shots. Um, I mean, you can see it best, obviously, when you're, <laughs> when you're up on the roof like that. But uh, even like if, if you're in some of the cathedrals, um, the, or, on some of those, you can see the dynamic lighting that's really interacting mm -hmm. with, the, um, geometry itself. I never really saw anywhere where the the shadows were bad quality mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i never noticed that you can see i mean he's got a very different shadow than he did on that other building when the lighting was different or here you know you see the lighting coming out and it's the mm -hmm. shadow is increasing right there i mean that's, great example that's so awesome <laughs> yeah um look, can we find a building that we can actually go inside because i think this is the first assassin's creed game that you can actually go inside of the building um, I could be wrong on that, but I haven't played Assassin's Creed since, like, Revelations. <laughs> there were a lot of games where, in the past, where you could enter certain buildings, but they were very pivotal to the story arc or uh, a side mission. What, is this Notre Dame? Yes. Awesome. It's probably not going to well, there, there was an open door over yeah. there. Yeah, so I, I expected something totally different when I went in here because I was like, oh, this is going to be like a, a great, you know, looking church. And then I go inside <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, <laughs> what is going on in here? Look at all the, the stuff, all the market and, and, you know, seeing these guys working on weapons and things like that just mm -hmm. kind of paints a picture as to what people were experiencing during the, the French Revolution. Um, you know, I, I can imagine religion being something that was really... Uh, important to people during that time and and can only imagine what those people would be feeling with something like this I mean mm -hmm. yeah I mean it's really cool uh, to see um, it's a very very pretty environment itself I mean all the different chandeliers <clears throat> you think about all of the cylindrical shapes that go into that all of the different piping and uh, and, and things like that just the the intricate uh, detail on on everything is done really really I mean, they even look at uh, that column there. They didn't have to go in and, and, and detail out like the those pieces there, but they made sure that the silhouette was strong on the modeling itself, um, even on things like that. And I can imagine that takes quite a few polygons. And then you start duplicating that pillar. Let's, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. probably in this row, you've maybe got 10 pillars. And then 
you go to the other side, you've got 10 more plus another row behind that. Uh, that polygon count can begin to add up very quickly. Mm -hmm. But luckily, we've, you know, we're now in the next gen of, of gaming. We've got powerful consoles that we can actually handle more polygon counts, things like that. So that's kind of something that I would really stress to game developers now is that don't be afraid to push the polygon count beyond what you're used to. Um, if, if your model needs the polygons, go ahead and add them. I mean, this is a perfect example of not being afraid of adding more polygons. That's something, too, where I would imagine they took advantage of something like uh, level of detail um, groups in order to oh, yeah. mm -hmm. in order to hide a lot of that you know, when it's further away. Because when you enter, there's tons of columns there, but, I mean, they go on for a long way. Look at how the lighting has changed just stepping in here. Yeah. Like all that blue. Mm -hmm. It's pretty incredible. It completely changes the mood of just this part of the building. Yeah. And are they actually like hanging that up in there? I mean, look at that, yeah, the yeah. stained glass. <laughs> that's awesome. You can keep going. I mean, that that's casting through and, um, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, it, I think it's showing up on the player too. Um, is it? I don't know. It looks right. like it. It kind of looked like it, yeah. Is it? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah showing up there. Yeah. I don't know. Wow. I don't know if they're using a system called light probes, which is basically an object that you put into the engine and it, it uh, captures light information and then projects that back down on the character. Um, that's kind of a, a way of baking in light, but mm -hmm. being able to project it onto dynamic objects like your character. So, really, really cool. Um, I. I guess we can move on and talk about environment texturing. This was another one that I really focused on uh, for this review. Um, just the amount of textures that you see in just this one scene is pretty incredible. I mean, you've got stone, you've got wood, uh, cloth. Uh, you've even got a special material that highlights um, this lift-off point, or mm -hmm. I guess it's called a lift. Yeah. Um, sure. You know, and it's a material that just oscillates back and forth. With that gold metallic overlay to it, um, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah, just it, it, then you have all the characters, but I'm I'm not looking at them uh, for this particular part. Now, right there, you see like the the graffiti yeah. and all that. You wouldn't really want to bake that into the texture of the environment. That's actually going to be a, what's called a decal, uh, which is a transparent texture that can just be conformed to any surface. Uh, this is great for creating graffiti like this, also for creating um, leaks. So whenever you have weathered buildings, they're going to have like this leaking um, pattern uh, like underneath windows and on roofs. Um, you're probably going to use a decal um, in, that, in that place just to kind of break up the overall repeating texture look. Um, that's a very common technique. So what would the benefit be of using a decal as opposed to baking it into the texture itself? Um, well, when you bake it into the texture itself, you can only use that texture once. Mm -hmm. And so, like with what you see here, you see that, um, that normal map that is giving us that, that image that's carved into stone. If we baked in the graffiti, we'd only get to use it one time, and it would only be able to be used in that one place. But if we use, it, use those as a decal, we can now use that texture that is the wall in many other places. Makes sense. So like the, the papers that you see on top of that door, probably going to be a decal. Uh, there are some, some placements of decals that I'm like, I think that might actually be a static mesh. You know, it might, might be just a simple plane. Like the, the paper that's folding over, I think those might even be, might even be meshes just stapled up there. And, and, and that's what's great about this game is, is like being a game developer and looking at that and going, I'm not sure if they did static meshes there or if they did decals. And I think that if they get people like me asking <laughs> questions like that, they've done a really great job. Yeah. Something I was really impressed with, as you can see walking out here, is just the amount of characters they were able to get on screen at one time. I think that was really impressive, really breathes a lot of life into the city. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's a worker over there to the right. There's all these people walking around chanting different things. 
that really just makes the city feel really alive. Now, one problem I did kind of see with this is just since there's so many people on screen, you can start to notice where they reuse some of the assets. Mm -hmm. But I think just, I mean, you can expect that when there's just so many different characters on the screen at once, you're gonna find kind of the same characters here and there. But I think they did a really good job keeping those on the screen and there's not a whole lot of popping going on. And you can really kind of interact with the characters very easily as well. They're moving out of the way, the AI is interacting nicely with them as they move. Yeah, that, I think that's something that we kind of tend to forget <clears throat> about Assassin's Creed games, is that these are not just crowds, they're crowds that you can interact with. Mm -hmm. uh, so like if Luke were to fire off a shot right now, uh, these cra this crowd would actually take off running. Just fire one into the air, see what that does. Or kill that guy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. look at these, I mean, they, they interact, they take off running, and of course the criminals there, they just say whatever, you know, we're used yeah. to this. But yeah, it's pe people panic, the police come out, and then Luke goes on a killing spree here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's awesome. And one thing you can really see here is the animation in the game is really fluid. You can see really nice execution moves going on there. And the transitions between parries and dodge, they really, really had nice transitions, so there's not a lot of popping going on. Everything felt very fluid in these group fights that you're doing. Mm -hmm. And the executions were really done, too really well done as well. Yeah. The camera kind of moves in, lets you focus in on that. <clears throat> yeah, even if I had times where I'd be attacked by, I don't even know how many different people were trying to attack me, but I never felt like I was having trouble seeing what I was, mm -hmm. like yeah. who was gonna be attacking me next. Even if it was somebody that was coming from behind me, always had a good sense of, uh, where was that? I think a really good job with the camera animation, which is yeah. something that I think for a lot of games can be very easily overlooked. Mm -hmm. um, but in a game like this where you have so many different views that you have to focus on, vitally important. Yeah. Uh, if you can go up here and climb on top of a building, we can kind of see some of the acrobatic animations that they incorporated mm -hmm. into the game. There's really nice weight going on there, and they, you can tell that they probably used a lot of motion capture for a lot of this stuff. And it really shows through. It's really believable and really realistic. And something else I really liked is just the amount of different animations they incorporated into the game. So sometimes you might climb up a wall and your character will grab with his right hand, and other times he'll grab with his left hand. So you have all these different animations going on for the same action. So jump might have three or four animations tied to it that they swap between. I think it's just really impressive the amount of work that actually went into the parkour animations. Yeah, something else with animations uh, that I think that we take advantage of is he is he's climbing up buildings that are so diverse. They're different mm -hmm. shapes, and the feet and the hands are touching almost every time. And that's because of a robust IK system that can recognize where the hands are planted and where the feet are planted. So like if you were to stand on a roof that had a little bit of an incline, you would notice that Arnaud, his one foot is kind of pointed down and kind of holding his weight back a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, again, those are things that we see in a lot of AAA games, but we just tend to kind of overlook them. So, I mean, that's, that's a yeah. robust IK system. That's not something that somebody just hand animated that's something that is technical and taken care of in programming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love the, how his stance transitions as he's standing on a steeper slope like that compared to just a flat, flat ground. Mm -hmm. They did a really good job on that. Now, like, um, also with animation, just kind of make a couple more points on that like with animation the crowds themselves I feel like most of the animation was done with motion capture um, you know all of the the crowds there are so many different animations and, and moods and uh, emotions that are going on in a crowd they would have to do motion capture mm -hmm. uh, with that um, otherwise if if they were to hand key all of that I, yeah. I would give them a 10 in animation on that but I know that they 
they were smart about it <laughs> and use motion capture and all of this. So. Yeah, and I really like how some of the NPCs have kind of different animations tied to them. So some of them right there were running away kind of in a different way. One of them was kind of stumbling. The other one was kind of just sprinting straight, trying to get out of there. So they really did a good job adding that variation so they're not all running in the exact same way. Something that I felt was kind of lacking with some of the crowds, though, were there were some animations that were really flamboyant and like they were trying mm -hmm. to show off this angry emotion, but their face didn't show that yeah. mm -hmm. at all. And I, I can't, you can't expect a crowd to have full on like facial animations. I mean, they did a great job with just the crowds themselves. I mean, yeah, I mean, they talk and things like that. But you just didn't get the exact same performance on the face that you do with the arms and you know, with, the, with the rest of the body, I should say. I think something that I really liked that they added in this Assassin's Creed is the parkour down that they added in there. So you're able to quickly drop from a top steep area and basically do a controlled fall so you're not risking your health when you're trying to get out of the place very quickly and you can also see kind of the animation that's really well done that's tied to that he'll grab onto different parts right there and just do really nice acrobatic animations and you're able to quickly get down now one thing about the gameplay that kind of has always plagued assassin's creed games is that when you're trying to chase somebody or trying to get get across a building quickly there are times when you interact with something that you really had no intention of doing that can kind of get frustrating sometimes but it's something that's difficult to remedy because everything in the environment is you can interact with it you can climb on it you can jump over it so something that's something that can be hard to kind of fix but i also think doing that free run down is kind of a good way to quickly get down of a situation you didn't want to get in like right there you can just drop back and continue running if you ran into a situation mm -hmm. like that yeah there were a lot of times I forgot about the, the parkour down. down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I liked about the UI was the button cues when you needed to perform an action. So let's try to find there's a chest close. They did a really good job of showing only when you were in the proximity. It's a nice little turn. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, another awesome nice animation. animation. So, uh, the, the little um, flare glow on the, uh, on the icon is really nice. Just little touches like that that help separate it from the typical interactions with the environment. Even the, when you get money, it kind of it ties to that same flare to keep the continuity. Um, the HUD is pretty much the same as almost every Assassin's Creed, if you've mm -hmm. played any in the past. My only complaint really about that is the mini-map is not very mini. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's one problem I have with it yeah. as well. Yeah, and so it gets in the way, um, especially if you have a fight going on, there's a lot of times where the map will cover that up and you can't see a lot of attacks that are coming from that location. I won't try to kill anybody right now. <laughs> One thing about the minimap too that I found is because it updates with what you have turned on, like if you, depending on what your view is for viewing quests or whatever you have turned on, uh, it can really get bogged down pretty quickly. And that really just also, once again, covers stuff up and just is overall distracting. Yeah. Another thing that I thought was fairly distracting was when you, um, for instance, this unspent sync points, mm. that's fine because there's nothing else, but that would come up when you have another pop-up that, like an artifact that you found, and it would cover that text up so you couldn't see it very clearly. And in those situations, when you're actually trying to read, say, for instance, you found a, a letter and it's the transcript of that letter that's being uh, read, if something happens that 
has another notification that covers up that text. And it's, there were a lot of instances where that was very annoying. Um, the map, this is what Dane was talking about. <laughs> There's a lot going on in this yeah. city. Yeah. And so the legend um, doesn't have any way <laughs> of narrowing this down. A filter <laughs> for this legend would make the map so much easier to read. But as it is, you have to like this. <laughs> <laughs> well, so one, it wasn't very clear. One thing, though, too, yeah, it, that was that wasn't very clear. Mm -hmm. to me, I'll figure out that was there. Um, is when you go to that legend where you see what everything is, and then you go back to the map. I forgot what <laughs> it was. Like all those quest targets, right? I don't know what color is what, mm -hmm. I'm, or I'm looking for something. I by the time I figure out where it is on here and then go back to the map, I've already forgotten what it was I was looking for. It, there's just a lot going on. Yeah, and then the main missions are not weighted. You can tell that the, the exclamation mark, that's what indicates the main story. And as it is right now, it scales up a little bit larger than the others, but it's not extremely noticeable mm -hmm. because there are so many other icons on here that are black and white. So for that to be a bright green or a bright yellow that stands apart that's not being used would have probably been a better decision here, but. Yeah, um, something about the UI though, um, you can actually modify it. So if you don't want any of that stuff, you can actually take it off. But it makes it really hard to play. Yeah. <laughs> because I was like, okay, what do I do now? I have no clue. I, there's no sense of direction or anything like that. You know, I think that having the ability to modify your UI, you, your UI is great, but I think your default state should be what people want to play. Um, you know, leave the, leave the UI customization to those who are really hardcore and want to just go nuts about it, but I'm, I didn't want to go hardcore with this. I just wanted a better UI, mm -hmm. and so um, I, I wanted less on the screen. One more note on the UI. I don't know if this technically falls into UI, but um, the Eagle Vision is really well done this time around. If, again, it's a feature that's been prevalent in Assassin's Creed. And in this one, you actually have the ability to upgrade your Eagle Vision, and it changes the range of how, how powerful it is. Hmm. So depending on where you're at, um, Enemies will glow red, um, persons of interest will glow yellow, um, NPCs that are irrelevant will not glow at all, um, and the rest of the world turns this blue shade as you can see. But you can interact with these two um, by sitting in the environment with them, and so you blend in. But these little cues like this that are fairly UI related are really nice. Yeah, that was something I've always liked about Assassin's Creed games like like that right there where you can kind of see see what the action is you're doing you know you want you know you need to hide especially when you're running by some somewhere really quick okay this is somewhere that i can go to to hide and get the guys from chasing me um so kind of talking about uh, gameplay a little bit in this um i really enjoy the assassin's creed series um it's really fun it's it's really awesome to be able to just get kind of get lost in this world. Uh, but there were a couple of things that um, I noticed about this uh, that may have been an unintentional consequence, like with the bits system. So what that means is like all of the different pieces that are on buildings, because there are so many different windows and different parts to uh, the buildings, that can create problems with gameplay and navigation. So whenever I'm running up a building, I want to go up this string of windows. And most of the time it worked pretty well, but there would be points where he would just randomly jump off in a different direction based on my thumbstick, you know, might be pointed to the left a little too much or to the right a little bit too much and then uh, taken off. Um, another thing that like with gameplay would be um, like getting into cover. No, I'm not talking about like the haystacks or anything like that, but like getting them to cover up against a wall, um, trying to play through some of those stealth systems. And I, I wasn't necessarily sure if I was actually in cover and then trying to come out of cover, like up against a wall and trying to assassinate somebody. That was a gamble 
because a lot of times that wouldn't work. There were a few times that I noticed where when I would go into cover, I didn't notice that anybody was really chasing me, but then I would hop right back out of cover and then there'd be somebody right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be like, wait a minute, I thought I was going in there to hide from people. And no, you can't do that. Yeah. <laughs> Got some sort of secret meeting going on up there. <laughs> Um, well, I think we can all agree that this game is really beautiful and it does a lot of things right. Now, there are a few minor issues with it, but those can really be overlooked. They did a lot of things right, and it's kind of exciting because this is kind of what we can expect with next-gen games in the future. So I think that wraps it up for this review. Be sure to check back to the Digital Tutors blog to see our final verdict on the game.